Ladies and gentlemen, the dung has officially hit the fan. Episode 6 of Reacher is all stakeout, investigation, and new realizations about the mystery that's unfolding. And last episode, we got the big reveal that Kleiner Sr. is not the big bad of Reacher Season 1. And that it's someone else, someone behind the scenes, someone possibly bigger, scarier, more nefarious. Is it the South Americans, or, or more precisely, the Venezuelans, as Reacher informed us earlier? Is it Teal? I don't know. Let's dig into it. So, after Kleiner's death, Reacher and Finley decide they should stake out the Kleiner compound and watch who's coming and going and what's going on in the aftermath of Kleiner's death. They might slip up, but before that, Reacher needs some less conspicuous wheels, and I love this, and I remember this from the book. So he goes and he trades in his Bentley for a very 90s-looking minivan. And, um, yeah, I, I like I like how he does it. He's always clever when he does stuff like this. He goes in, he says he needs the windows tinted, and they're like, well, it's going to take three days. And so he's like, well, I guess I'll need a, laner, a loner then. And they're like, well, we don't do loners. He's like, well, you know, these Benjamins might change your mind. So uh, he gets the guy to loan him his, his crappy 90s uh, Dodge Caravan. So anyway, uh, let's see. Finley heads back to the station to check in with Teal, uh, where where he's told that, you know, all this, all this stuff you've been looking into the Kleiners and stuff, all that business is done. The main focus here is, you know, finding... Who killed Kleiner Sr.? Like, that's top priority. That's all that matters. Uh, clearly, he's not the culprit. And it's pretty obvious here that Teal is like, he's he's either trying to cover something up or cover his own ass. Like, I don't know. But he's got something going on behind the scenes. You know, maybe he's the one running the show. Maybe it's someone else. But while Finley's at the police station, Kleiner Jr. walks in, attacks him, punches him, uh, and, uh, you know, eventually cooler heads prevail, uh, but it's clear that Teal is on the side of the Kleiners in all this. You know, he, he clearly thinks that Finley is getting a little too close to figuring things out, to whatever's really going on. And he benches him. He tells him not to go where the Kleiner murder happened right away. Just to hold off, you know, cool off a little bit, which was very suspicious. It, and he calls it out like, you're telling your lead detective not to go to a crime scene? This is ridiculous. Um, anyway, all right, so then Roscoe relieves, um, man, what's his name? Uh, Picard, uh, in the, uh, witness protection duties, right? Uh, I guess it's not really witness protection, it's more like just protection, uh, but he's been guarding the mom and kids of the Hubble family, Charlie Hubble, uh, in a cabin in the woods, so Roscoe comes to take over. Meanwhile, Reacher and Finley stake out the Kleiner compound where we learn about Finley's past and that his wife didn't leave him but actually died. Uh, he is a widower and he's been living with the guilt of her death for many years. Um, you know, and the life he leads now is like his own penance, his own punishment for it, as he kind of explains. But it's really not his fault. You know, he was unable to keep her from dying. Like she got sick and died. It wasn't his fault. But, you know, he said that he would do everything he could and keep her alive, and obviously he couldn't do that. So this is why, you know, he continues to wear his wedding ring, and, um, yeah. So we get that kind of background on Finley. Um, then, on the very night that Picard and Roscoe switch out uh, <laughs> the, the the roles of, you know, guarding the Hubbles, the Venezuelans come for them. Now, why is that? Like, if they've already taken out Hunnel, uh, Hubble, which we don't know that for sure, but if they've already taken out Hubble... Why do they need to take out his family? You know, what's the point? Is Hubble still alive? Does the wife know more than she's leading on? So they need to take her out as well. Also, is Picard in on it? It's kind of odd that no one came until Picard left, right? No one came after them until Picard dipped out. And it was like right away. So guys come after them. And that night, Roscoe takes them out uh, and, and saves the Hubbles. And they make plans to meet back up with Picard at a diner the next morning. Now, back on the stakeout, eventually they see a truck pulling out of the dock in the middle of the night. They follow it. When they look inside, they realize it's empty, which leads Reacher to the conclusion that they're not bringing in counterfeit money from South America. They are in charge of sending out the counterfeit money to South America. So they're printing it here in Margrave. 
Reacher attempts uh, to call one of the professors that his brother had been in contact with before uh, concerning the case, but it turns out that that professor has been killed. Bum, bum, bum. Naturally, everyone dies. All the leads get killed. Uh, Back at the diner, Roscoe tells Mrs. Hubble that her husband had secrets and he wasn't really working at the bank anymore. Mrs. Hubble says, yeah, I know. I I, I realize. I knew all that. Uh, And then she reveals exactly what's been going on for the past year and a half. That Kleiner hired Hubble to move large amounts of currency around and and pay him ridiculous amounts of money to do so. And, And, you know, at first he makes it seem as though it's all above board. But clearly there's something nefarious going on. Uh, no job pays that much, you know, for completely legal activity. So Kleiner was completely blackmailing him is what is revealed. Uh, Kleiner says like, hey man, look, the stuff you just did for me, uh, it's highly illegal. (laughs) You didn't do anything legal at all. Um, and you know, if you ever try to leave or tell anyone about this or stop working for me, you're going to go down for 30 years. And then, yeah, so he gets, he gets Hubble to be his, basically his counterfeit money launderer for this big operation. And then the South Americans show Hubble just how ruthless they are by torturing, crucifying, and castrating a man right in front of him. So this is why he was so afraid in the beginning. You know, he would rather take the fall than tell the truth. Scared to death of these people. So even though Kleiner is dead now, he'll have to worry about them, the South Americans, the Venezuelans, if Hubble's still alive. So, Picard comes and picks up the Hubbles, and Roscoe heads back to Margrave, so it remains to be seen whether or not Picard is a bad guy. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, Reacher goes to buy a suit so he can pose as a lawyer and speak with uh, Castillo, a woman who is another professor that worked closely with his brother uh, and that other professor that had been killed. She's scared to death. She's in police custody, and Reacher goes to find out what she knows. He then, he buddies up to one of the cops at the station, uh, who's a former military uh, guy, and uh, asked him to kind of you know keep a special eye on the professor and, and let him know if anyone comes around asking about her. Um, so this professor reveals that underground economies... Um, now, th- th- this, this first little fact was from her. It, it's fantastic because I looked it up, and it's true. There are more $100 bills in circulation than any other dollar amount more than $1 bills, more than $5 bills, $20 bills. You know, anyway, it's a wild statistic. But yeah, I guess a lot of, oh, most of these $100 bills are overseas and involved in illegal operations, i.e. bad guys use this money. So this woman informs her, him of all that. Um, and also that the, one, uh, the $100 bill uh, is used so much because it's sought after by criminals, right? The most counterfeited or attempted to be counterfeited of all the bills ever. And also, it's difficult, but not impossible, to replicate these $100 bills until Joe Reacher made it impossible because he shut down the manufacturing of the type of paper you need for these bills. She said, you know, everything else is is possible to come by, but no longer can you get the type of paper you need to print it and make a realistic looking $100 bill. So the only thing that couldn't be replicated was that, the paper, right? And, um, but then Joe finds out, hey, somebody is printing money again. I've shut all this manufacturing down, but somebody's printing money. The reason he was in Margrave and, you know, searching around was because he, he, he had tracked down a lead. They told him that this is where the money was being printed. So, Obviously, they've got their hands on some type of paper. They're printing it there, something. We don't know everything just yet, but it's clear that the money is being printed in Margrave. Anyway, the Venezuelans attack Reacher after he leaves the police department, but of course he takes them out in brutal fashion. And this is where a lot of people have been complaining about the series, saying that Jack had way too much trouble taking out some of these bad guys in the series, you know, much smaller guys. But I want you to keep in mind that These are supposedly professionals. Jack's been reiterating this the entire series. You know, we're not dealing with just regular guys. They're like military guys. You know, they're like black ops. You know, whatever. Professional badasses. So yeah, Jack is much bigger and stronger, but realistically, they probably would give him a hard time. Size and strength is not everything, and if you've ever read 61 Hours, then you know what I'm talking about. Anyway. I love the way Jax takes out the final guy at the end here. You know, he jumps over the railing and chokes the guy to death with his tie. It was pretty badass. 
how he was like hanging there, choking the guy out. Awesome, brutal stuff. And there we go. The extremely revelatory episode six is finished. Two more episodes to go. Cannot wait to wrap this thing up. Uh, looks like the story of the counterfeiting is going to likely play out very similar to the books. But as I said, they've obviously changed things around with having Kleiner die in the middle of the story. So likely someone else will be revealed to be the big bad, the guy in charge. Um, you know, maybe Kleiner wasn't the top of the food chain in Margrave. Um, anyway, I'm excited to see what's next. I'm excited to see how they wrap this thing up and if it will be any different than Killing Floor in the end when they wrap it up. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. The reason I went into way more detail this time and kind of walked through the episodes is because I realized that for episode five review, I actually left out a lot of stuff and I wanted to mention, you know, things. I I, I just completely forgot about things, right? And so this time, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. I took pretty detailed notes and I wanted to make sure that I said everything, everything that I wanted to. So if you enjoyed this review, if you are a Reacher fan, TV series, or book series, please like and share the video, and please subscribe to the channel. I do more than just Reacher content on this channel. You know, I talk about all things pop culture and entertainment, but I have a lot of Reacher content, book reviews, opinions, info about the series, and any news that comes out concerning Jack Reacher. So even if it's just for my Reacher content, you might want to stick around. And if you do decide to stick around and subscribe to the channel or favorite or follow the podcast, Daily BS, then I will talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks.